Hi, I'm John, the anti-poverty engineer, and I'm going to read a little bit from an article in the Christian Science Monitor, The Seeds of Despair, dealing with global hunger going up. Then we're going to have a little laugh at the economists who say the crisis is worse than the Great Depression. And finally, an article, MS, MSNBC, Homelessness Surges as Funding Falters. From the Christian Science Monitor, Seeds of Despair. Before the global economic crisis, there was a global food crisis. Last year, soaring prices for basic food sparked riots in about 30 countries. In June, the UN held a summit to tackle it. In July, the G8 pledged to act. But in the fall, the, door, the floor fell out from under the financial markets. Now, like a mountain of maize, countries' economic worries threatened to bury their concerns about rising world hunger. Look out for number one when you play death gamble, right? Food prices have eased, but they remain high in many countries. Price volatility, the credit crunch, and shrinking coffers are making it harder for farmers to get loans to invest and plant. And there'll even be less food next year. Banksters cutting back on food production, threatening the survival of the planet. At a follow-up conference on hunger this week, the UN announced that 40 million people joined the ranks of the undernourished in 2008, bringing the number of hungry people to nearly 1 billion, roughly 1 in 7. Yet donor nations have delivered only a trickle of the 22 billion 10 warplanes they pledged last year. Meanwhile, food production must double by 2050 to head off mass hunger amid a global population surging from 6.5 billion to 9 billion. Unless we give everybody an interest-free credit card, make them all rich so they can afford birth control. Aren't countries who can afford birth control now worried about keeping up their birth rates? Make them rich, they'll cut back on kids. But as long as they're starving, they're going to have as many kids as they can to hope one of them survives to take care of them in their old age. The world can solve this problem in the 1960s. The technological green revolution in grain yields, irrigation, and fertilizers increased food production. Oh, but then they ran out of money, right? So, simply improving food storage could increase production by 30 to 40 percent in many poor countries. Building roads could get more goods to market. The FAO estimates that only 30 billion per year, 15 more planes, invested in farm infrastructure and production could eradicate the root causes of world hunger by 2025. Last summer, Political momentum was building behind the UN effort to increase agri-aid, focus on far, small farmers, and better coordinate anti-hunger efforts, all charity efforts, not interest-free credit efforts. The momentum must be maintained, but of course it's already faltering. Another story from Infowars.net. More economists say crisis is worse than Great Depression. So are the economists discussing how to fix things? No, they're discussing how bad it is compared to what it was before. MSNBC, homelessness surges as funding falters. Providers to the poor try to stretch meager resources to meet growing need by Cady Hughes, H-U-U-S, Seattle. As snowstorms blew into this northwest city and the economy iced over in December, the occupants of a shelter nestled among industrial buildings on the north side prayed for divine intervention. A, doesn't have to be divine. We were hoping for the Christmas miracle, said Glenn Dennis, 41, who was working his way through a residential drug treatment program at the City Team Ministries shelter. Dennis and the other 11 guys in the long-term program, dubbed the Disciples, also worked each day to prepare for some 50 to 60 overnight shelter guests and dish up free hot meals to about 100 people. We kept doing what we were doing and hoped someone would come by and drop off a big check. Gee, never heard of a time bank? But the check did not come, even after a coalition of other shelters, nonprofits, and local churches tried to pull together a rescue package to keep the shelter open, looking for federal cash, the only kind of cash they know about, right? On December 27th, City Team Ministries, based in San Jose, California, closed the Seattle facility, leaving scores of people to seek food, shelter, and sobriety elsewhere. For Dennis who'd been free of crack cocaine for nearly 11 months, the upheaval led to another painful relapse out on the streets. It's a real loss, says Herb uh, Pfeiffer, executive director of the Union Gospel Mission Shelter in downtown Seattle. We're all scrambling to try to handle the growth of homelessness because of the economic situation, and then the closing of another mission adds more pressure. I know, eh? in a world with money disappearing like that, 
you're going to sit idle waiting for more money. Nothing you can do, I suppose, eh? Unless you heard about community currencies, and I guess you haven't. It's a real loss, she said. So, city team closure is a piece of the expanding problem of homelessness across the nation. Shelters and related services for the homeless are facing funding shortfalls as the downturn takes its toll on state budgets and corporate donations. And while individual donors in many cases are keeping up gifts, or even digging a little deeper for charities that help with urgent needs like food and shelter, the service providers say they're faced with a rapidly growing demand from people losing jobs and homes in the economic crisis. Remember, in the last Great Depression, they put all those people out of work and they've just reported 7 million people died. So now with a larger amount of people, if they do it again, you're going to lose more than 7 million people. You should. Less funding, more demand. No kidding. Uh, downturn in overall funding in this case is accompanied by a surge in demand. So a homeless shelter, food pantry, or job training program is going to feel it first, says Chuck Bean, executive director of a non-profit roundtable of Greater Washington in the District of Columbia. Even if they have 100% of their budget compared to last year, they now see a 50% surge in demand. Then they get into the tough decisions. Do you thin the soup or shorten the line? Just like in the last depression, eh? Poor people who just don't have any community currencies. Even as census takers fan out in cities across the country this week in an attempt to count homeless populations, hey, counting them, well, doing something, advocates and experts point to a bevy of evidence that homelessness is rising and will continue to, most notably among families with children. What can I say? They don't know about community currencies. Shelters across the country report that more people are seeking emergency shelter and more are being turned away. In a report published in December, 330 school districts identified the same number or more homeless students in the first few months of the school year than I identified in the entire previous year. Meantime, demand is sharply up at soup kitchens, an indication of deepening hardship and potential homelessness. Everything we're seeing is indicating an increase, said Laurel Weir, policy director at the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty. Jeez, and they never ever searched for anti-poverty system, and they never actually came up with community currencies, you know. It's sad to think people are possibly getting paid money for not finding the answer when it's out there, and they just aren't bright enough to have found it. And homelessness tends to lag the economy, so we're probably seeing the tip of the iceberg here. In the foreclosure crisis, the people being displaced from homes won't likely be on the street immediately, explains Michael Stoops, director of the National Coalition for the Homeless. Yeah, another guy didn't hear about community currencies, I know. They're so slow in the States, eh? The people who have lost homes or tenants and homes were, that were foreclosed have downsized. And if that doesn't work, they'll move in with family or friends, says Stoops. After a while, they'll move into their RV in a state con campground. Next step is a car. And the worst nightmare for a working middle-class person or even a wealthy person who's never experienced homelessness is knocking on a shelter door. Services teeter on brink. As the case of Seattle City Team Shelter illustrates, many nonprofits serving the poor are working on a shoestring even in better times. Boy, wouldn't Time Bank software help them all, eh? Seattle area donations to the shelter had to be supplemented from general funds to Jeff Chernis, chief financial officer of City Team, which operates shelters and food programs in five other cities. And then the people who've contributed the cash, you could send out your teams of people to fix things in their homes and pay them back with time. Ah, uh, but they don't have a way of exchanging and counting their time dollars. So these people have to pay to get their lawns done and their stuff done, and they don't have enough money then to give to the poor. Uh, we were hoping the Seattle shelter could become self-sustaining, said Chernis. Well, if it had a ta time bank, it might be, you know, because as people give you money, you send people to give them back time from your unemployed guys who are profiting from the money. City Team Ministries, a Christian organization funded by donations from individuals, corporations, and churches, kept the Seattle faculty afloat with help from its general fund for almost a decade, but the 2008 crisis prompted them to retrench, running out of money like everybody else, because they don't have a time bank. Every major source of funding is under pressure in the current environment. Charitable foundations, which rely on corporate profits for their seed money and investments to preserve and build those funds. Yeah, yeah, loan shark them out. Yeah, that's right, they're doing that too. Have been forced to pull back grants after taking a massive hit as corporate earnings faltered and stocks plunged. Yeah, they took a bath on the stock market too. The National Council of Foundations 
They counted on usury to make money for the poor. The National Council of Foundations recently estimated that philanthropic foundation endowments have lost $200 billion in value during the economic crisis. A few of the largest foundations have, despite losses, promised to maintain or give at higher levels in the face of the crisis. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation this week said it would increase its giving up to 7% of its assets from 5 And the John D. and Catherine T. Mc Foundation announced three gifts totaling $34 million to help homeowners in Chicago avoid foreclosure and keep renters in homes. Well, why don't you take a little bit of $34 million and invest in setting up a time bank so more people can give and then get time bank and they don't spend money on it. 